Hello everyone, uh, I'm Andrea Bihidi from Hot Forex. And so today we have the second part of AutoChartist webinar from Eli, the CEO and founder of AutoChartist. So we are pleased that he's giving this webinar for our clients. However, before we uh, I hand over to Eli the, the webinar, I'd like to make sure that everyone uh, has no issue with the webinar, that you can hear us loud and clear and there are no audio or visual issues. Uh, a yes or no would be great. Uh, please note that if you have any issues uh, regarding audio and visual, uh, any visual issues during the webinar, please check firstly your settings before uh, before uh, putting your uh, your query in, in our question window. Also, if there are any questions that you like longer explanations for, and you know that we have a an hour limit in our webinar. Uh, please, please email your request, your question at webinars at hotforex.com. So, before also before I hand over to Eli, I'll, I have to go through our disclaimer warning first. So, this material provides a general marketing communication for informational purposes only. Nothing in this communication contains or should be considered as containing investment advice or an investment recommendation or solicitation for the purpose of purchase or sale of any financial instrument. We make no representation and assume no liability as to the accuracy or completeness of any information provided and we should not be held liable for any loss arising from any investment made based on the information provided in this communication. This communication must not be reproduced or further distributed without our prior written permission. Trading Forex and CFDs may not be suitable for investors and carries a high degree of risk, risk to your capital. Trading such products is risky and you may lose all of your uh, investment capital. So, uh, okay. Now I will hand over uh, to Eli the rest of the webinar. Uh, hope you're having a great session, everyone, and talk to you later on. Hello, everyone. Okay, this is Ilan. How are you? Um, I hope you're all doing well, and I hope you can see my screen. I should have the um, Hot Forex uh, homepage up on my screen. Can everyone see that? Uh, just an okay or a yes from somebody would be really appreciated. Okay, so, um, and I guess that uh, people can hear me too. So, um, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, to present this uh, today's webinar. It is an extremely, extremely important uh, webinar. Um, in fact, uh, many people uh, forget that um, to, uh, to be a successful trader um, is not only about a good entry position, it's also a, about an appropriate exit. Right, so it really, I remember the line, it takes two to tango. That's really what it is with regards to trading. You can have the best entry in the world, but without a good exit, nothing's gonna happen. You're not gonna, you're not gonna make uh, money in this market. So, um, you know, uh, many people uh, focus so much on the entry um, into their trade that they forget about this uh, little thing called <laughs> risk management, right? Um, and so, and so, this is the main topic of today's uh, conversation, and um, and how uh, we can use what is probably one of the most underutilized uh, features of order charts. Now, um, with that being said, it's not a massive room. I'm going to try and keep an eye on the questions. Uh, but I've also got um, Rhonda on the line who's going to help me uh, with some of the technical matters if there's um, uh, non-trading related questions but access and login related questions uh, to order chartist um, uh, and she'll allow me to to focus on, on what I want to say <clears throat> so let's uh, let's get things going so Firstly, uh, what you want to do is, if you want to get into Auto Chartist, you need to log into your uh, web client, into your uh, Hot Forex's uh, client area, and 
um, <clears throat> what you'll do is you'll find a icon there called Auto Chartist. And uh, if you click on that, uh, you have a page that will allow you to um, uh, get some auto charters information. So if you click on the red button that says auto charters trading opportunities, you can click on that and that'll launch the web application. You can also choose to receive some daily market snapshots. Now I covered those topics uh, very briefly, well, I guess kind of in, in general in last uh, last uh, the last session that we did together. And I'm not really going to be going into those uh, today. I may just touch on them. Um, now, uh, if you want to get the MetaTrader plugin, which is what I'll be talking about today, then um, you can actually go to um, uh, this uh, session to, uh, I mean, let me send that in the chat. You can go to this uh, URL, which I'm sending you now. Um, uh, that is where you can download the MetaTrader plugin uh, for your MetaTrader, right? Um, and there's three little videos there. Uh, there are a few minutes each, really worth uh, watching if you if you have the time. I think there, it's a total of nine minutes in total. Just give you a general overview of the of the of the plugin. But uh, for now, what I want to do is um, I want to um, actually launch the uh, order charters trading opportunities. Uh, <clears throat> um, uh, 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 web application uh, that is actually this um, over here it gives you some trading opportunities and um, that'll actually get you started in the market but as I said that's something that I I, um, I covered in last week's uh, webinar I'm not really going to be going into that again today <clears throat> so um, once you install the MetaTrader plugin I am going, you will actually see under expert advisors, there's an um, a expert advisor called Auto Chartist. Now, don't be worried. Um, it's called an expert advisor, uh, but it doesn't trade on your behalf. The reason it's called an expert advisor is because we use some technology that can only be used within an expert advisor um, section of MetaTrader, but it does not trade on your behalf. Once you click it, uh, drag it and drop it onto your chart, what should happen after a few seconds is that you will get uh, all the trading opportunities available for you right now on the market, right? So this is again something we covered in last week's uh, session where um, AutoChartist is able to scan the markets for you um, uh, for trading opportunities. So instead of looking at dozens of charts, you only have one chart open with all the trading opportunities on it and it gets the trading opportunities only for the instruments you have in your market watch. So in general, not only for order charters, you should always, you should always, um, you should always uh, filter your market watch window for the instruments you're actually interested in. Not, don't have a list of um, uh, a few dozen instruments. Okay, that'll allow you to focus on, on what's important to you. So let's actually click on one of these examples. I clicked on NZD USD and I've got a four hourly uh, chart coming up over here. Right. So now um, let me zoom out of that. Okay. So now we have an interesting opportunity in New Zealand dollar. We think heading down towards this gray area over here. That is what we call the target region. Okay. So this is. Um, uh, one of the things that Auto Charters gives you is this target region where we think the price is going. Now, one the 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 the, the big deal that we're trying to um, actually um, uh, look at right now is where to set our stop losses and take profits, right? And this is what those um, little icons on the right hand side or the little lines on the right hand side tell us. This one here that I've circled now is the expected price range for the next hour and the next set is the expected right price range for the next 24 hours and so what you can see quite clearly is that this um, uh, forecast for this um, price movement of the New Zealand dollar is way over uh, one or two days of movement right so this is a what we call a long-term uh, projection on the market right so some of you may 
uh, have the patience to trade something like this. Some of you may not, but certainly it doesn't preclude you. Even if you don't have the patience to wait all the way down to this level, it doesn't uh, stop you from actually making um, such a trade. Now, what I'm going to again talk about uh, today, which I keep on saying I'm going to talk about, but I haven't gone into yet, is how to use these lines to set up market appropriate stop losses and take profits. And I use the word market appropriate uh, because that's really what I want to show you now. So, what I'm going to do is before I go any further, I'm going to click on the little world icon and I'm going to select this URL. And I'm going to paste it into my um, into my web browser. And what what's, what that's going to do is that's going to launch me straight into the Auto Chartist uh, web application. And the reason why I'm going into this application right now is not to show you trading opportunities, but to click on this section here called Volatility Analysis. And this is where we come to the real meat of what we're doing today um, in our in our session. Okay. So I don't know where all of you are in the whole world, um, but uh, this is um, the expected volatility of Euro USD during uh, the day, right? And what we have here is every hour of the day. You can see that from zero to 20, 2300 hours. And this is the price movement that's to be expected. Okay. For that instrument during that time of day. Now, um, this um, over here is actually set to um, uh, European time. Okay. And so you can see that the majority of the volatility on Euro USD is actually um, at. 10 a.m. This is when London opens because this is, I think, uh, London GMT plus two that I'm set to over here. And during the open of New York. So during the open of London and during the open of New York. So let me show you what I mean by market appropriate stop losses and take profits. Many of you, I'm sure, have listened to a lot of educators out there that have told you, hey, you should always set a stop loss on your, uh, on your positions. Right? Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, you could um, incur a lot of losses on your account. And this is correct, but they don't tell you how to set your stop losses. So let's just say you're trading the, uh, the Open of London and you choose a 10 pip stop loss, right? Because you don't know how to choose stop losses and you choose a 10 pip stop loss. You can see that during the London Open, we're actually on average expecting a 20 point movement on euro dollar during the London Open. And, and normally between 15 to almost 25 uh, um, uh, 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 pips in movement during the London Open. During the New York Open, we see a lot of volatility. Probably average of 20 uh, um, uh, pips movements between, between 15 to 30 pips of movement in the first hour of New York, the New York Open. So if you're trading with a 10 pip stop loss, you're going to be in the markets for five minutes, no more than five minutes, five to 10 minutes. And what does that mean? That means that you're going to get stopped out with market noise. Right? And that is something that you do not want to happen. Right? So many people uh, complain, right? Um, they they complain. They get into the market. They get into a position, and uh, the price. They set a stop loss. The price hits their stop loss. They get knocked out of the market, and then they move in the direction of their trade. The price moves in the direction of the trade, and then what do they do? They start complaining to the broker. Hey, you guys are chasing my stop losses. Every time I set a stop loss, it seems to touch it, and then it moves in, in back in the direction of forecast. I don't know, something is wrong, right? Because we all want to blame somebody, right? The truth is that there's only one person to blame and that's yourself. And the reason why I say that is because you're getting stopped out through market noise instead of incorrect forecasts. So let me switch back to my uh, MetaTrader. Oh, actually, before I do that, I want to 
um, uh, uh, switched uh, to my uh, New Zealand uh, dollar um, uh, that we were looking at right now. Give me a second. Uh, NZD USD. Here it is. Okay. So um, what we are, where we are right now in our uh, trading right now, we are a few hours away uh, from the uh, New York Open, uh, so about two hours away from you. So we're actually in a very, very low volatility period right now uh, around this area over here, right? So on average, we're expecting about a, a 10 pip movement of New Zealand dollar um, on, on um, right now. Okay, so let's go back into uh, my MetaTrader and zoom in a little bit. Okay, so so the question for us now is you're looking at this opportunity, and the question for us now is where do we set our stop losses and take profits? Now we know that in the next hour we're only expecting it to move a short amount, uh, right? About ten pips or so. But very, very soon, in the next um, uh, two or three hours, we know that the New York is going to open and the volatility is going to increase, right? And so uh, we need to be very, very careful. Some of you may be thinking of, let's say we trade this position, right? We open this, uh, we, 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 we actually trade this. In fact, let's do this right now. We go new order and we go uh, short in the market. Okay, some of you may be thinking of taking this position. I personally would have not taken this position. Uh, as I mentioned in last week's uh, webinar, the only reason I'm taking it now is for demonstration purposes, but what I normally do is wait for a confirmation bearish uh, movement. So in fact, the fact that this is a bullish candle right now um, is a reversal of a confirmation for me. So um, I would have in real life would have not traded this, this opportunity. But anyway, for the purposes of this conversation, it's fine. Now we're naked in the market. <clears throat> Where to set our stop losses? Now, um, some of you may be using a trailing uh, stop loss, right? It's trailing stop loss. So you choose your trailing stop loss, let's say, to be 10 pips uh, trailing stop loss. But let's quickly switch back to the expected volatility. You can see here that at, right now you're expecting only a 10 pip movement. Right, for this time of day. But look what happens in the next two hours of the day, how the volatility increases. If you use a 10 pip stop loss and the volatility is increasing for the next two hours, your 10 pip stop loss is insufficient to take into account market noise. Right? So if you're going to be setting a trailing stop loss, you should not be setting a 10 pip stop loss a trailing stop. You should be setting a 20 pip, right? A well, 18 to 20 pip uh, a trailing stop loss, right? So you can be in the market for a while. In fact, I would set my stop loss to be out of this range. So maybe in the 25 pip uh, movement uh, um, uh, trailing uh, uh, stop loss uh, range. So this is very important: <clears throat> is that using trailing stop losses in a market where volatility is expected to increase is a very, very risky and incorrect thing to do, okay? So be very, very careful of this, right? If we were, for example, in a situation where we were in a, let's say we were um, a few hours ago trading four or five hours ago and we were in this area over here, and we were in an environment where we were expecting a decrease in volatility, right? then it would be safer to use a trailing stop loss, but the trailing stop loss may keep you in the market for longer than you expected it to, because you're giving the, 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 um, um, the instrument too much uh, room to move. So as you can see, I am not a big fan of trailing stop losses, not because the idea is incorrect, but simply because the volatility um, 
um, sorry, the, the stop loss does not adjust with the market volatility. And so this is something, this, this phrase that I want to keep coming back to all the time is you need to focus on setting market appropriate stop losses and take profits, not uh, just stop losses for the sake of setting stop losses. <clears throat> um, I see we have one of the questions which is what is a trailing stop loss? Um, uh, uh, okay, I think that's slightly beyond, uh, uh, um, uh, it's uh, Prem Kumar has asked that, uh, that question. A trailing stop loss is slightly beyond, I guess, the, the conversation. I would assume that you were already familiar with basic stop loss strategies, but I, I guess let me say a word of it. A trailing stop loss is when you set um, a stop loss uh, that follows the, the current price of the market. Right, so um, uh, uh, okay, so so let me let me show you what that means quickly. So, for example, what I could do over here is I could set a trailing stop loss of uh, let's say a forty point uh, trading stop loss, and what will happen then is that um, uh, if uh, my let's say my, the market moves down, right, which is because I opened a short position, let's say the market moves lower and lower and lower, the trailing stop loss would keep following 30 pips uh, above my uh, current price of the market, right, so it kind of follows the market 30 pips away, right, that's what a trailing stop loss is, but I think for now, um, uh, uh, you know, um, I guess uh, if you need to read up about trading stop losses, you can do that uh, slightly beyond um, beyond the scope of this presentation. It's a whole topic on its own. Um, uh, so, so um, Shane, I will come back to you um, uh, uh, about your question about the the uh, probabilities in in just uh, in just a moment. Um, so, uh, give me give me a second with that question. It's also a very very good question. So right now, um, we're expecting volatility to increase, okay? And because we know we're, uh, New York is opening just now, and yet we don't want to hold our position um, uh, for you know the next three days to hit our our take profit over here. So now my question is where to set my take profits and stop losses. So let's focus on the stop losses side. So what I always do is I always look back in the history, and I look to see which of these um, volatility levels coincides with important market movements in the past. And so I can see very quickly that this four hourly volatility level at 0.7251 has had some consolidation and interesting movements around it in the past, right? In fact, we can look at that level. We can also look at this level here. And why am I saying this? I'm saying this quite clearly because you can see this over here, that level over there, this level over here. So immediately what I'm looking for is a kind of um, uh, support or resistance levels down at the equivalent uh, volatility levels on the other side of, of this, right? So for example, I could look at the equivalent volatility levels down below the four hourly chart or the four hourly uh, volatility, sorry, and the daily volatility, okay. And so this is approximately where I would be setting my stop losses and take profits uh, for this trade, right. So let's go ahead and, and do that. I know I've opened a short position here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify my order and I'm going to set my stop loss to be um, uh, at a zero, um, uh, uh, 70, uh, to uh, 51, which is at the four hourly, um, at the four hourly level. Okay, now let me erase some of those drawing objects. Okay, so I'm not going to set a take profit at this stage, but certainly I've set my stop loss. So now I'm no longer naked in the market. Now that's very important. Remember that naked in the market. What you don't want to do is show all your private parts in the market. And that's a term we use when you don't have a stop loss uh, set. Okay. Let's look at an example on uh, EURUSD. Right now, what's going on right now? Okay. So now we're on a daily chart. 
So order charts will only show us the daily expected volatility because it's only expecting us to trade uh, because this is a long term pattern expecting us to hold that position for a long period of time. Now, why do I say that? Because I am not showing my short term uh, volatility expectations because I have not enabled a 30 minute trading opportunities. If I show 30 minute trading opportunities, what I'm, what's going to happen is that order chart is going to show me a lot more here. So let's look at this opportunity on, uh, here we go, EuroCAD resistance. Let's see what this shows us. Okay, so interesting. So it's shown us that order chart has identified a resistance level on EuroCAD, and it's actually done a pretty good job. I wouldn't have picked this one up myself, but you can see this resistance level over here. Okay, this is this green arrow, and it's telling us this um, that it's turned around back towards the resistance level, and it's right. It bounced off, came down, and now it's moving back up towards that resistance level. And so this is an interesting time to take a long position on EuroCAD. And what we can do is we can actually buy a long position on EuroCAD. There we go, we're long in the market. And now again, the question is where to set our stop losses and take profits, right? So again, in this situation, we're long in the market and we're looking to set some stop loss uh, levels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit, okay, and see what's going on here, right? So you can see that order charters has provided us some volatility for the next 30 minutes, hour, four hours, and 24 hours. And so very clearly, if we use this, um, uh, this level here as our take profit, which I'm not, again, not setting at this stage, if we use that as our, as our take profit, um, we, we need to, and we can see that it, it relates to approximately the four hour expected volatility in the market. And so what we can see is if we use that as our take profit, we should be looking at the four hour uh, volatility on the downside. So now let's look, use our drawing tools here on MetaTrader and draw some lines. Interestingly enough, the four hour volatility seems to coincide with some interesting uh, uh, psychological levels in the market, right? Um, so does the daily, right? Uh, in fact, I would argue that something around this level over here also is quite interesting. A lot of consolidation, a lot of movement at that level of the market. And in fact, I look at that and I think this is probably a good level. Somewhere between uh, kind of the, the one hour and the four hour mark should be a good level. So I am looking at holding this position, not all the way up to this resistance level, that auto chart has predicted, but certainly for the next hour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to right click this um, uh, this position here. I'm going to modify my order, and I'm going to set my stop loss at uh, 1.47840. Okay, and now let's erase some of these drawing objects and see where our stop loss is. There's our stop loss. Okay, very messy chart. I've drawn all over my chart. There's my stop loss, right? According to market volatility. Now, um, I am going to show you how we come up with these lines because I showed you briefly um, uh, about the expected volatility on an hourly basis. But how do we come up with these um, forecasts on a... Um, uh, those on those um, uh, those lines within MetaTrader. This feature in the volatility analysis section in order charters is what we call at order charters the trumpet. Why do we call it the trumpet? We call it the trumpet because it looks like a trumpet for <laughs> for obvious reasons. Huh? And what this trumpet tells you is the expected volatility on the selected instrument on the selected day at the selected time, right? for the next 15 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, four hours, and 24 hours. And so what, and, and so why that's important is that this is not an hourly expected volatility as we had before, 
but this is expected volatility right now. And the reason for this is that volatility changes in very in much more granular periods than every hour, right? And certainly it changes for every uh, a day of the week. Okay, let me see what. So now I want to show you about the days of the week. Why does the uh, Kiwi trade more on a Wednesday than it, or not trade more, why is it more volatile on a Wednesday than it is on a Tuesday or a Thursday? I bet this comes as a big surprise to some of you. That's because um, Wednesday is a double swap day on the New Zealand dollar, right? Double swap means you're earning twice the interest or triple the interest and you're, uh, or you're paying triple the interest. That happens because the banks need to pay or receive interest for the Saturdays and Sundays that uh, people don't trade the markets. You know? And so what happens is that many people move in and out of New Zealand dollar on that day uh, to earn uh, the interest. Right? So, uh, so that's very, very important. And that's primarily done by um, uh, uh, um, banking uh, uh, banks because they're obviously trading in huge, uh, in absolutely huge numbers and they're holding their positions overnight. Um, if you've ever heard the term swap rate uh, or the overnight rate, um, that is uh, what that means is that uh, they're getting, uh, they're paying or they're uh, receiving uh, interest on their money. Okay, and so this is why it's important to get volatility not only per hour of the day, but for every hour of the day, or in fact, every 15 minutes of the day, uh, for a specific day of the week, right? We also uh, opened up a position on uh, the EuroCAD, right? So let's see what EuroCAD looks like. Here is EuroCAD. Here is what our trumpet looks like on EuroCAD. Right? And you can see that our time has just switched to EuroCAD Wednesday at uh, 2.30. Uh, um, I think it's GMT plus 2. Uh, so, uh, so we were just at 2.15 a second ago. We were looking at the, uh, at the Kiwi. Now we're at uh, 2.30 looking at the, the Euro uh, Canadian dollar. And again, we can see, what can we see here? Very interesting, a massive uh, increase in volatility that we're expecting uh, because, again, where are we? We are over here. We are currently over here, and we're expecting it to m the volatility to massively increase over the next few hours when, uh, in fact, Canada starts trading, right? Um, uh, and, and so when Canada opens up, uh, we're expecting the volatility to increase. So notice how everything I'm doing on stop loss management has to do with the um, the volatility in the market. But there's one other thing that I want to be, I uh, want you to be very, very aware of. And that is position sizing. So this here on EuroCAD, I am only planning to keep, as we can see by the expected volatility for the next, let's say, hour or two hours based on the, the volatility in the market, right? But if I had to trade this position, where was that, um, where was that opportunity on EURUSD? Here we go, EURUSD daily. If I had to trade this daily chart, right, down to this level over here, that's a much, much bigger movement. If you look at the size of this movement, although it's on our chart, let's say from the current price, um, uh, let me move my meeting software around. My current price is um, 117.93 and uh, order chart is projected down to um, uh, 116.50. Uh, so that is an absolutely massive movement of what is that? Uh, a hundred, I mean, oh, it's just a huge movement. I don't even know what that is. Uh, over 100 pips, okay, in movement versus um, this opportunity that we traded earlier, which is uh, let's say New Zealand dollar, four hours. Let's switch back to that for a moment. Okay, we're expecting it down to this level over here, which is just a few dozen pips. Now, the interesting part here is that when you trade these two different um, um, uh, opportunities, 
you could be setting market appropriate uh, stop losses and take profits but what I should have done is I should have taken a much smaller position on this uh, um, uh, New Zealand uh, dollar position than I did on the on the Euro CAD and the reason why is because I'm planning to hold my position for much longer right and the, the where my take profit would be would be much further out right so if I only want to uh, lose let's say um, a, a dollar on this trade right which is a huge amount of my equity right because this is only a $100 account or actually 100 euros if I only want to lose a euro, one euro on this account um, um, then um, holding my position for longer actually puts uh, more risk onto um, onto my trade right so in fact what I should have done is I should have traded euro CAD uh, with a much bigger position right I should have actually traded euro CAD um, let's say with double the amount right so um, let's actually uh, go back into into um, euro CAD and in fact increase my position size on that right so I didn't do this at first But certainly, I should have way increased my position size. I should have traded double what I traded on my uh, New Zealand dollar position. Why? Because my my um, my stop losses and take profits are much closer together, right? So I'm risking uh, less money from a from a from a stop loss perspective. If I had to trade the daily chart. I would trade a much smaller position size. Now I can't go smaller than 0 0.01 lots. So think about that, right? Think about setting different position sizes for different types of instruments. And in fact, very soon AutoCharts is going to re release a risk analysis tool that allows you to set your position size uh, more accurately. Uh, but that's coming up in the next in the next few months. But right now I need you to think about that not setting your stop losses based on your 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 um, how much money you want to lose base it on where you think the market is going and then set your position size according to how much money you're prepared to lose right now of course in an ideal world um, uh, you want to set take profits as well right which I haven't done uh, in in these situations but uh, but uh, that's not what we're focusing on right now. We're focusing on risk management and risk management really is about uh, not losing excessive amounts of money. That's the first thing you have to do. When I used to play tennis when I was, uh, when I was a child in my, in, my, in my youth, my dad used to tell me one thing. When you first start playing tennis, don't worry about hitting winners initially. First thing you've got to do is you've got to worry about getting the ball over the net. Right? First, thing is you shouldn't do don't lose the point once you stop not losing then you can start winning right <laughs> so <laughs> so so that's what you think you should think about doing is not losing you should think about um, uh, uh, you should think about not losing and, and not worry too much right now about uh, about uh, about winning right so manage your positions uh, better right? and so um, and so what you can do now is this is a very good example the, the price is moving in the direction of our trade and now what we can do is we can start adjusting our stop loss and actually moving it up because remember we're expecting uh, more volatility right but we already set our expectations in terms of volatility right with our with the distance from our current price to uh, to our stop loss so what I would consider doing in this situation is actually moving our um, uh, stop loss um, a little bit higher if that's what you want to do because the price has moved in that direction and so uh, for example uh, what are we on on euro cad over here uh, we could um, uh, uh, increase our our stop loss um, uh, a little bit over here okay so again what I'm going to do now is um, is switch back to my um, Uh, auto charter screen and um, I'm going to answer a question that was issued by Sean uh, slightly earlier um, so sh sh sorry to Shane sorry Shane Shane you asked 
can the probability change to the highest? So let me explain what Shane is asking, I think. So in this graph about the expected volatility, uh, this dark area is the mean, right, which is the average, and the light green area is what we call in statistics one standard deviation. So when uh, the, uh, the um, New York opens, we expect the, the, the volatility of, of uh, or the price movement of EuroCAD to trade somewhere between 30 pips and it looks like 52 pips, right? Kind of 52 pips and 30 pips with an average of around 40 pips. This is a confidence level of 68%. So we're confident with a 68% uh, um, uh, confidence level that the price of EuroCAD will trade in that range. Of course, um, that confidence level could go up, right? So we could get a massive movement, and this is something that could happen with an important news event, right? And that's something we don't take into account right now in this version of the product is the upcoming news events, but certainly, um, this is a very, very good reflection um, of the expected volatility on EuroCAD. But, but um, so Shane, of course, the price could move much higher, right? So this is all statistics, right? Um, uh, so um, you could get a massive spike. The European or the the the, the European Central Bank or the Canadian uh, uh, Bank could come up with some kind of announcement or surprise announcement. Who knows what could happen in the market, right? But. Uh, but um, uh, 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 certainly, this gives you a very good idea of the of the trading of, of the trading range that could be um, expected. <clears throat> so I have another question coming in from Richard. Um, so in terms of the uh, uh, Richard asks, um, per the price patterns shown by order charters, do I need to wait for a breakout and retest of either the support trend or resistance trend? So. Um, uh, this is slightly beyond uh, today's uh, conversation, Richard. But but let me let me go into that for just uh, for just a, a moment. So what I trade uh, personally is only what I'm showing you here right now. So I personally trade completed chart patterns, and then breakout key levels and breakout approaches. Um, so yes, I wait for the breakouts, except for on the key levels, um, I would trade approaching key levels as I have in this example that I've uh, traded today on the, um, on the I think it was the Canadian or Euro, uh, uh, Euro CAD. I traded um, this position here. Let me just crunch it up. Um, uh, Oh, I think I'm on the wrong, uh, oh, I actually am on the right thing. Right, so uh, I traded uh, the, the. Um, oh, it's actually broke through the resistance level. Sorry, oh, here we go, the resistance level's on the 30 minute. I traded this uh, 30 minute uh, resistance level. So you can see the 30 minute resistance level, and then on the one hour, it actually broke through a resistance level on, on the one hour. Run. Um, and in fact, what I'm going to do uh, while I'm talking about this, I'm actually going to close all my positions uh, because I just made myself a good chunk of change right now. I made myself over a buck in today's uh, present in today's presentation, which is uh, a, a percent in just uh, 40 minutes of my trading day. Right, I made a whole percent of my money, which is pretty pretty damn awesome. So I'm pretty. Pretty pleased about that one. Um, so, so I close my position. I'm that kind of trader. I never wait for trends to play out. I just, uh, if there's money on the table, I take it off and I move on to the next opportunity because there's always opportunity in the market. In my opinion, there's never a reason to hold on to a position for too long. If there's money on the table, uh, take it. <laughs> that, that's my that's my view. Uh, but certainly, um, uh, I would trade these kind of positions where the price is still moving towards a um, a level. Now, if you want to be, uh, this is a very advanced topic, um, maybe I'll, I'll go into that in just a moment, so let me, for just a few seconds, because I don't have many questions coming through. Uh, so I've enabled the uh, emerging chart patterns to be shown, uh, and so people may ask me, uh, Ilan, how would you trade an emerging pattern, right? So this is uh, what we call emerging on, on uh, New Zealand dollar, four hour uh, uh, New Zealand dollar, so uh, it's a channel moving downwards, 
and you can see the expected price range movement and so how do we trade this there hasn't yet been a breakout through resistance nor support right so the question is how do you trade this uh, so uh, I would trade it um, in the following manner for example you could wait for a breakout right so you could look for a breakout at those levels and what you would then do is you would place two orders in the market you would place a pending order a buy stop at uh, 0 0.7259 and a new order, a pending order, uh, a sell stop at uh, 0 0.71953. Okay, and so what you've done here, oopsie, is uh, sorry, let me. Uh, uh, delete those what you're doing here is you're not actually taking a position on the market right now what you're doing is I'm not gonna you're saying I'm not gonna trade this downward trend I'm waiting for a breakout and then if the breakout happens then uh, my position will open right so so that's a technique that you could use uh, quite an advanced techniques uh, to, to use uh, to trade uh, these uh, types of uh, setups that have not yet broken through support or resistance. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, good. Thanks, Richard. I'm glad that you uh, uh, are happy with my uh, with my answer. Right. Um, and again, though, uh, one thing you've got to remember is that because we're talking about today's uh, topic is about market volatility. Th this type of trading technique, where you're trading uh, um, the, your limit orders or your stop orders. Uh, this, of course, um, does not take into account uh, um, uh, market volatility, right? And so you can see that on the top side, we're probably expecting a movement there in the next four hours. On the bottom side, in the next eight to 12 hours, right? So a slightly skewed view uh, on the market um, at the moment uh, from order charters. And, um, uh, and so you have to watch this very closely because as soon as your position opens, then you have to go back into your MetaTrader and you need to um, set your uh, stop losses accordingly, right? According to the market volatility, which you can't do right now, right? So, so very, very important that when you have a stop or limit orders, uh, you are essentially naked in the market. And so be very, very careful um, uh, and monitor those positions uh, very, uh, very carefully. So um, I'm going to uh, delete uh, this order uh, right now uh, because I don't want them in the uh, in the market okay so um to uh i think there's one more question coming through um uh, richard asked what is the success of the probabilities richard in fact next week's webinar is all about uh probability uh of success if you want to see the probability of success you can actually click on this little world icon click on performance statistics copy that link and copy it into your browser and um, there is here we go there's a browser and you can actually go into the details of all these performance stats uh, these performance stats are definitely beyond today's uh, presentation um, uh, but uh, come to uh, the next presentation we're speaking specifically about uh, those okay um, so so Richard, um, uh, you're asking uh, how to trade these patterns when there is a pending when there's pending news ahead. I must tell you, Richard, that you cannot avoid news. News is happening all the time. It is happening every few hours of the day. There's news happening. There's no way to avoid it. Um, certainly, um, I would. Uh, I would be very cautious when trading uh, with upcoming news events. It wouldn't tr change my trading style from a technical perspective. So I would still trade the same opportunities that Autochise provides. What I would do personally is I would reduce my position sizes. So I would trade the same patterns, 
um, I would uh, set my stop losses and take profits in the same places, uh, but I would reduce my position sizes dramatically, right? Just in case of uh, an increase in unexpected volatility, right? So that's what I would do. Um, so I think that trading news events is not about trading your, changing your trading style, but it's actually about uh, managing your risk correctly. So, so please uh, keep that in mind. Okay. So just to sum up on today's presentation, um, uh, uh, launch the order chart as web app, look at the instruments that you're trading and understand the volatility for every hour of the day and change your time zone of your order charters based on where you are uh, in, the, in the world, right? Understand the volatility, understand when it is that you're trading, right? So you can understand how to set your stop losses. And then finally, of course, use the order chartist um, uh, uh, trumpet, the volatility indicator, to give you an idea about where to expect your stop losses and take profits to where to expect the market to be in the next hour, four hours, and 24 hours. You don't have to trade the chart patterns. The chart patterns will show, but you don't have to trade them. You can use this volatility information. Um, uh, you, you can use this this um, this information even if you're trading uh, moving averages or, or MACDs or RSI or Bollinger Bands or anything that you're using, right? stochastics. Use the volatility uh, analysis uh, to help you set market appropriate stop losses and take profits. Okay, and that is what I want to show you. Remember, uh, uh, set your position sizing, very, very important. Um, uh, so, so um, Amika, I hope I've pronounced your name correct. It's Amika or Amika. Um, uh, you say that you, you order charts to stop sending your daily emails. Uh, that is definitely a technical error. Um, you might want to um, uh, uh, pop us over an email, um, uh, support at autocharters.com to see if you're subscribed or not. Obviously, make sure to let us know um, uh, that Hot Forex is your, is your broker. But what you also might want to do, uh, oops, sorry, is you might want to, um, Oh, we can't actually um, uh, set it over here. Okay, so what what you want to do is you want to make sure that in your um, uh, hot forex uh, 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 client portal, you've got the uh, received daily market report set to yes, um, and then um, and then uh, select uh, which session you want to get them in, either before the open of New York or before before the open of London or before the open of Tokyo. So select or all of them if you want, but that's a bit too much email for my liking. Um, select which ones you want and, and save that. Um, and then you should be getting your market reports again. If not, uh, drop us an email, please. Support at allthechinas.com. And with that, I hope you've enjoyed today's presentation. I know it was a very advanced topic, stop losses. No one really wants to think about uh, uh, losing money, uh, but it is extremely, extremely important uh, topic and important to understand market volatility. Uh, I hope you all uh, learned something at least um, and, and found it useful. Um, the presentation, this webinar and the previous webinar uh, should have been up already. In fact, uh, today's webinar should be up in the next few days. Um, if not, uh, won't you please uh, drop an email to webinars at hotforex.com um, and, and ask uh, when that webinar uh, recording will be up. Um, uh, uh, it should be in the next day or two. Thank you again to everyone, and thank you again to Hot Forex for allowing me this opportunity uh, to present. And oh, by the way, uh, Order Charters is free. Uh, I'm not trying to sell you anything today. Order Charters is completely free. Uh, you get it with your Hot Forex account. I think you have to have a minimum deposit of some some level, but you do not have to pay for it. Uh, so uh, again, this was a purely educational webinar. I'm not trying to. Uh, pitch or sell anything to, to anyone. <laughs> so, thanks again, everybody. Uh, enjoy the rest of your, your day or your evening, wherever you are in the world, and I hope to speak to you again in the next few weeks.